ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin. This is my adorable co-host, Teddy. And today, we're talking about Intel 10 nanometer, and also a bit about Ryzen 3000, because some uh, leaked benchmarks have come out, CPU-Z benchmarks. So, we've been talking a lot about Ryzen 3000 lately, obviously. It's very impressive, and it's looking really good. But I've always said to you guys that you should never count Intel out. First of all, Intel has a lot of money, and that certainly helps with things like research and development and building really good products. Uh, so for that reason alone, you really shouldn't uh, count them out. And also the fact that they've been hiring people like crazy lately, very, very experienced people as well uh, from the industry. So yeah, definitely don't count them out. So these leaked benchmarks actually came from a Chinese forum, and this article is uh, from WCCF Tech, but uh, a lot of people have been talking about it. And it's that their uh, 10 nanometer Sunny Cove CPUs are on par with a 5.3 gigahertz 9700K at just 3.7 gigahertz. So let's read the article. During the announcement of their 10 nanometer Sunny Cove architecture at Computex, Intel unveiled that they have achieved an 18% IPC improvement with some workloads showing an IPC improvement of up to 40% over the Skylake architecture. Now like AMD's claim of a 15% IPC improvement, there are no independent sources to confirm Intel's figures of 18% IPC uplift. So we have to wait till both chip makers launch their respective products in the market so reviewers can fact check their claims. So 18% is a lot. Um, thinking back after I did my Sandy Bridge video for Hardware Legends, uh, Sandy Bridge would have been the last, it would be the same. Sandy Bridge was 18% uh, IPC uplift. Um, that's a lot like I think these days with most of us reviewers and consumers as well anything over like 5% uh, is considered at least decent you know 10% I think most of us would accept as being like a good uplift so the fact that Zen 2 with AMD with Ryzen 3000 is supposedly 15% and Intel 10 nanometer is supposedly 18%. That's looking really, really good for uh, both companies in terms of a good IPC gain uh, over their previous generation. So let's take a look at these leaked CPU-Z benchmarks then. And as you can see, it's looking pretty good there. We have the 3600X, 3700X, and 3800X there. You may notice that those clock speeds are a little bit higher than usual. We'll talk about that just in a minute. And then you have the uh, Intel CPUs there, some of them also higher, you know, they're overclocked, the 9700K there coming in at 5,300 megahertz. These are a single thread test, so this is just on a single core. But you can see there the Intel Comet Lake core, ES, eight core, eight thread. And that's coming in at 640. And then down a bit more, you see Intel Sunny Cove core, ES, six core, 12 thread at 3.6. A gigahertz and that's coming in at 630 and that's pretty good there this is looking really solid those AMD CPUs as well you can see they're, they're putting up really good numbers as well um, the four core Sunny Cove as well there at 3.7 gigahertz uh, scoring almost the same 639 to the 645 of the 9700k at 5.3 gigahertz so that is incredibly impressive but as always with something like this you definitely need to take it with a huge grain of salt um, but if if it is true that would be very very impressive there the article goes on to read now you might be wondering why these clock speeds are higher than the maximum boost clocks that AMD has listed this is talking about the AMD CPUs there the Ryzen 3000s the reason is that each chip has precision boost overdrive which delivers a 100 to 200 megahertz additional boost range over the standard boost frequency. So each chip will run at a higher boost frequency across as many cores as possible. And since the specific CPU-Z benchmark uses, uses only one core, a single thread, the frequency is for a single core alone. With that said, AMD's Ryzen 7 2700X delivers a score of 488 points at 4.35 gigahertz with the Core i9-9900K ends up at 600 points at 5GHz. 
So yeah, AMD did make some good IPC games with Zen 2. So what can we take from all that information then? Well, let's talk about AMD first. Those Ryzen 3000 CPUs are looking really, really solid. If we look at how they compare to the Intel CPUs that are already out in the market right now, that's looking really good. And even compared to the previous generation, that's really, really solid there. Um, I don't think anybody would complain about the performance coming out of these Ryzen 3000 CPUs. And this matches up with what AMD has shown and also matches up with some of the other leaks we've seen. So yeah, Ryzen 3000 is looking really, really good, but you guys already know that and we've spoken about it a lot on this channel. So I think it's pretty fair to say Ryzen 3000 at this stage anyway, from all the information that's coming out around the industry, all the leaks and everything else, it's looking really, really good. Now let's switch over and talk about Intel and their 10 nanometer CPUs. These are also looking really good. I mean, I don't think, let's just say the, the Skylake architecture came out in 2015, right? That's four years ago. Uh, and it's been, I guess, advanced to an extraordinary degree, but it's still four years old, you know? And so there was always going to be with Intel's 10 nanometer, with all the development that's gone into it, we knew it would be a big step for Intel. The problem being is that it seems like it's taking so long for them to get there. But at 18% and with the performance that apparently we're seeing according to these leaks, that would be a very good step forward for Intel. Uh, but of course, there's all kinds of other questions that come along with it. You know, how much power do they use? How much would they cost? What kind of core counts would they have uh, to compete with AMD? And all those other questions. But as sort of an initial look here, I think it does look really good. And as I said at the start of the video, just really don't count Intel out. I would say you can for right now, but don't think it's going to last. Don't think that Intel is like, oh, this is it. You know, it's over. They're just going to give up. The company's bankrupt. You know, it's it's gone. It's it just so isn't there. They still are dominant in terms of market share in the desktop PC space. Um, they've got a lot of money and a lot of talent. And if this is anything to go off, their 10 nanometer CPUs are going to be very, very impressive. So keep that in mind. But I would say for the foreseeable future, if you're, even though, you know, we got to review them and definitely don't pre-order anything or do anything like that, it's never a good idea. Uh, I certainly think that AMD, in my personal opinion, from everything I've heard and all the information I've read, AMD are going to be in the dominant position, I would say, for probably the next 12 months. In the desktop PC, PC space, that is. Just, um, we're just talking about desktops. Um, I certainly think that's going to be the case. But I'm going to throw it to you guys. What do you think? In the comment section down below. What do you think about this new information we have around Intel's 10 nanometer CPUs? And what do you think about the sort of state of the market and where you think it'll head going forward? Do you think AMD is going to, uh, you know, gain even more market share, keep gaining? How, how much do you think they will gain? Or do you think that they'll only gain a little bit and then Intel will bring out these 10 nanometer chips and real, and then, you know, AMD's market share will, will start to go down again? Uh, I, I don't know. I, I want to throw it to you guys. Let me know in the comment section down below what you think about that. If you do not know, I'm also doing a, a GPU giveaway. So definitely check out that video on my channel if you haven't already. And I thank you guys for watching this video. Please subscribe to Tech Showdown if you haven't already. I'm sorry this video was, I, I didn't upload for a few days. It's just my, um, my, my personal life has been a bit kind of messy for lack of a better word. So I've just been trying to, uh, reorganize reorientate myself i guess and get back on my feet and um but before i made another video or so i didn't feel like it would be a very good video if i if i did it in a when, when i'm not in the right headspace and stuff like that so it should be good going forward anyway i'm just letting you guys know that's why there was a little bit of a gap there and hardware legends episode th episode four is coming really soon the nvidia oh i shouldn't say what it is it's an NVIDIA video. Well, I said that as much already. You guys are really going to like it, so definitely check that out as well. I thank you guys for watching this video, and I'll see you all next time.